In this video, I want to show you a very useful new form element in HTML5 called DataList. The file that I've got open here contains an ordinary text input element. The type attribute is set to text, and the new list attribute is set to title list. This associates the input field with this data list element. The value of list is the same as the ID of the data list. Inside the data list element are three option tags. You'll probably recognize the option tag from select menus. The only difference is that there's no closing tag or text in the option tags. So what does this do? Let's take a look in Opera, which tends to be the earliest adopter of new HTML5 features. As you can see, it looks just like an ordinary text input field, but as soon as I put the focus inside the field, it displays a list, which comes from the data list. So I can choose Miss, or Mr, or I can put in a completely different value. I'll make myself a doctor. So that's the way in which the data list works. Unfortunately, Opera is still the only browser that supports data list like this. So if you associate a data list with a text input field, other browsers ignore the preset options. That's OK, but to make your forms as usable as possible, it's often advisable to use a select menu for preset options and provide a separate text input field for situations where the presets don't apply. Thanks to some clever experimentation by Jeremy Keith, the well-known author and conference speaker, you can have your cake and eat it by wrapping a select menu in a data list. This is how it's done. In this page, I've got a select menu and a text input field. Let's look at it in live view. The select menu has a variety of options, Mr, Mrs, Miss, and then Other. So if somebody selects Other, you expect them to put the details in this text field. Before wrapping the select menu in a data list element, you need to make a few changes to the option elements. Any element that you don't want to show in the data list, you need to remove the value. So I'm going to remove the value from Choose and also the value from Other. We're now ready to wrap the select menu in a data list element. So put the cursor after the label, insert a new line, and Dreamweaver immediately brings up the code hint for data list. And I'm going to give it an ID of title list. And I'll put the closing data list tag after this label here. I don't want the second label to appear on screen if the browser supports data list. So I'm going to change this from a label into a span. And also change the closing tag to span. What I want to do is to associate this text input element with the data list, but at the moment its name is other. So I need to change that to title and change the ID also to title. But two elements on the same page can't have the same ID, so I need to delete the ID from the select menu's opening tag. It doesn't matter that the select menu and the text input field have the same name. In fact, it's exactly what you want. Form processing scripts use the name attribute to identify the selected value or user input. If someone chooses a value from the select menu, it's sent with the form data as title, but if the text field is used instead, that value is sent as title. And finally, we need to associate the text input field with the data list. So insert the list attribute and set it to title list, and then save the page. There's just one thing I need to point out before we test the page in a browser, and that's in the style sheet. You need to set the display property of data list to inline block to fix a bug in some browsers. Now let's take a look at the page first in Opera to see how it works. Here we are. And it works exactly the same way as the original page. So your options are available there, which you can select, 
or you can type in your own value. And that's what will be submitted with the form. And let's see it in a browser that doesn't yet support data list. Here's the same page in Firefox 4, which doesn't yet support data list, but the select menu is available, and so is the text field. So that's a nice little bit of progressive enhancement thanks to HTML5's data list element and a technique developed by Jeremy Keith.